Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Buster Show podcast. On today's episode, we have a very special guest and friend, and that's because Micah Johnson, the legend, is in on the show. <laughs> My friend, how are you? I'm doing well. I don't know about the legend part, but we're in here. <laughs> hey man, and what you're doing right now, we'll, we'll get into it. I, I think it I think it applies to what you're doing. So first things first, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people who are probably listening and watching this now know you as an artist uh, and as an NFT maker and as somebody who, you know, is able to create these stories around those things. But you didn't start out as an NFT designer. What what sort of the background behind your story, you know, becoming a professional athlete, then turning into an artist. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. I, I, I was the baseball guy that really somebody they knew about me for a minute and then just, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it all started for me like back in 2016 when uh, I got traded over to the Dodgers from the White Sox. And I was coming up in the White Sox organization and I was like, thought I was the guy, man. I was balling out. I think I stole like 90 bases one year. I was like, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm off to the races, get to Chicago. And, uh, that was the, I, little did I know that 90 base season was my peak and they traded me to, to LA and, uh, happened to be the first year that Dave Roberts was the manager in LA. And, you know, the Dodgers are always loaded with superstars. And so I got there and, uh, you know, I was in the locker room and I was like, man, <laughs> Like, when am I going to AAA? <laughs> and like, just let me know so I can get my housing situation figured out. And and they, I stuck around for a while. And I remember watching Dave like call rookies up or call new guys up, and they would like introduce themselves and like tell a fun fact and um something that they like to do, like a hobby. And he would pair them with one of these superstars, and they'd go do it. And uh, I, for some reason, I was kind of doing well, and they, I stuck around towards the end of spring training and. I said, it's about to be my time. He calls me up and um, I got super nervous. I'm not even going to lie. And uh, my hobby growing up was playing piano. Um, and I did a painting class right before I went to spring training, like a paint and sip class, you know, I made like a landscape thing. And first thing I said, when he, I said, when he asked what I like to do, I said painting. And he made me do a painting of Maury Wills, uh, who was my, like my guy in spring training. And, uh, did the painting with Maury Wills, went to Walmart, got all the supplies, um, presented to the team. And like these superstars came up to me and were like, yo, this is really good. Like you have a lot of talent and like really encouraged me. And it wasn't at all like remotely close to anything good. But like those words of encouragement, like that was all I needed. That was my fuel. That was it. Wow. Who, who were the stars on that team at the time? Man, obviously Kershaw, Justin Turner. Carl Crawford, Chase Utley. That's a pretty crazy team. Howie Kendrick, uh, wow. Andre Ethier. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. And then there's me. <laughs> I think it was like number 11. I was like, how do I even get 11? <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, I, I'm, I'm a lifelong Yankees fan, and, you know, all those low numbers are retired, you know? Like you can't even get below like 15 anymore. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. No, I was fully expecting to be like 80 something. I don't know how I got 11. <laughs> but, you know, so you, you do this painting. Was that the first time that, you know, people who were also in your profession at the time had, you know, respected you for something else? Yeah. I mean, what was crazy was like, as soon as they told me that, I was like, okay, I'm an artist. Like I'm going to, and that really? whole year, that whole year I was drawing, sketching, like taking canvases on the road. Like, and then at the end of the year, I went to the Dodgers. I said, Hey, I got this idea. We should do a charity event and do an art show at Dodger stadium. Like, like also like also really ridiculous, like requests. Like here I am been painting for like a year. I'm like, Hey, we should do an art show at Dodger stadium with my art. And they were like, amazing. Like this would be the first art show we did. So we did the art show like a year later. Um, that off season and it was incredible like sold out like packed wow was like, yeah that confidence man is everything what they told me that day was like like that changed my life wow that's amazing so you, mm -hmm. you do this art show and then how so for 
chronological sake, how long ago was the, the art show was while you were still playing or right after? No, while I was still playing. Um, this happened, I started painting 2016 spring training, art show, winter of 2017, like February. Got traded over to the Braves, did another art show in Atlanta that off season at the Woodruff's Art Center. And then traded over to Tampa. And then that's when I was, you know, that was when I was done in 2018. 2018, tried to make it on the PGA Tour, played golf every day, um, worked on my painting, um, and then realized, like, I need to make money. You know, I think <laughs> <laughs> golf, cart fees are racking up, baby was on the way. Um, and I just really started just, I was grinding on my painting. I like, just kept, kept to it. Um, that's all I wanted to do. I just know I needed to find a message and a style. Now, so obviously, you, you, you know, some people knew you from baseball and some people were starting to know you from art. How do you turn that into being a professional artist pre NFTs, pre, you know, I imagine going fully in on Internet and social? Or did you do that right off the bat? So. Really, it was like, boom, all at once. Um, I got into NFTs slash crypto around end of 2019. It's a good Released time. my first NFT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was zero information. There were no influencers at that point. Like there was like, you know, a few on Twitter. There was no articles like this. Right. Um, got into it like in end of 2019 because I wasn't selling this, any, of, any of those paintings. I wasn't getting art shows anymore. Like, because I wasn't with the Dodgers. I wasn't with the Braves. Right. Um, I was, I was just grinding, man, in the garage and uh, found NFTs. I was like, this could be an opportunity to make money. Like, let me see what I can do. Maybe I can, uh, let me just try, give it a shot. I released my first two NFTs. Jimmy bought them for like, I think it was three ETH, like 900 bucks then. And I was like, this is incredible. Like, this is amazing. And to this day, like, great friend, like super loyal to Jimmy. Um, a couple months later, you know, my nephew asked if astronauts could be black. And so I started painting him as an astronaut. Same time, I had no representation, no, like, I didn't know a gallery. I can't, like, just, like, yo, like, this is my art. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I was making these paintings and animating them with my nephew's voice and turning them into NFTs. And it just kind of kept, it kind of caught on, caught on. And it, it did well. And I was able to, like, go to a gallery in Los Angeles named art angels and say hey man like people are liking my stuff like what do you think and they were able to look it up I'm like okay cool <laughs> so it was kind of like nfts first wow and this was all the way back in 2019 2019 it started minted the first one like february 2020 now what what platforms were you using at the time You know, super rare. I think it's a little... Can't find my... It's a tiny bit laggy. I don't think any of my pieces have ever resold. Maybe one. Oh, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. I think it should be better. Is that um, good? Yep, good now. So in 2019, what platform were you using? Because, like, for context sake, I mean, what a lot of people know of CryptoPunks now. What what did a CryptoPunk cost? And, or when did they even exist? I mean, Ethereum was, I mean, I got paid three Ethereum. That was 300 bucks. For three? I mean, so I mean, I mean dollars in ETH? Or one, one, oh, one. So 900 No, it was 300 ETH. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, went down to like 90 bucks, I think it was, in March of 2020. I was like, I lost it all. Like, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, it crashed. And, and so, yeah, it was like 90 bucks, frame of reference. It's like three thirty two hundred now. That's insane. You gotta you you develop those diamond hands early. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> sold not trans full transparent. I sold the bottom when it crashed at ninety bucks. I was like, I was going. We lost it all, so I sold at ninety bucks. <laughs> yeah, Everybody has to do that. I don't think there's so, one person out there that hasn't done that. So anybody that says they are, they're probably lying. <laughs> no, no, it's just like. 
It's like when you go play blackjack, man. You 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 get on a streak your first time going. You're like, yeah, man, this I'm the best at this. And then that's when it comes and hits you in the face. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, you need like real Michael Jordan mental toughness to be able to like. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> incredible, man. You people um, got some, you know. But yeah, man. So you you, you yeah. know you start putting these out in 2019, and then when, what was the first? You know, obviously you had some traction right off the bat, but then what what were sort of those turning points maybe as NFTs started to get more popular? And when did you realize, you know, like, oh, I can like this could be a movie. This can be like all these different things. When did that hit or when or were those the goals from the beginning as well? Um, no, you know what it is, man. Um, what's so beautiful about NFTs and crypto is the ability to connect and learn with, learn from people like full stop. Like I came in there, didn't know a single thing. And now I'm connecting with people that have been there, you know, veterans and, and have experience about what the technology can do, what's the future of the technology. So I was like, I was just in there trying to connect with anybody possible and just learning. And so that, that all of 2020, you know, I wasn't releasing much. I maybe would release like six works and I was just learning about what's possible, like what is possible. I just kept learning and learning and learning. Um, and then, you know, at the same time, my art career was going like this too. Art Angels, you know, I had a solo show out in Los Angeles, sold out right away. I was like, you know, that was doing well. And everybody was, was resonating with my message, like with the astronaut helmet. And I said, you know what? I need to figure out a way to get this out there more. Like, and seeing how people build like these tribes in NFTs and like the community around NFTs, I have to release this crypto natively because then like, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. At that time, I, I, I didn't know how movies got made. Like, I didn't know like, oh, like if I need a script or I didn't know. I just like, this is a character that, that needs to be out into the world. I'm going to release it crypto natively. We're going to find out if it's going to sink or swim. Like. There was no like, oh, you know, let's make this character because then it's going to be a movie, then it's going to be a series, we're going to have a video game. That was all after. Crazy. So what what was the goal with, you know, this this current project? How many chapters are you doing this current one? Because I know you're on chap you're about to be on chapter four right now. Yeah. Yeah. So my idea was I needed 10 chapters. I said, let's do 10 chapters so we can tell a story and maybe someone can see it. This was like, dude, we dropped chapter one at like, that was the boom, you know, um, didn't plan that obviously. Um, I thought I needed 10 chapters to prove out that it was a good fit or that, you know, people were interested in it. Um, and people were after one, after one, <laughs> <laughs> after chapter one, that, sh that, that narrative flipped and it was just back. It was just grind mode. And when I saw the numbers that it did and the people with the messaging on Twitter, I said, okay, I need to do everything I possibly can to make this as big as possible to reward those people. Cause they completely changed the trajectory, not for just me, but my family. Like they believed in not just me, but this character and this message. So like literally we had, it was a five, seven minute open edition, $1.6 million or two something million dollars, whatever it was, right? Seven minutes is up. I'm like, that's cool. Now the pressure hit. Now it's like, okay, we got to go. And so I wanted to execute on the film in between first and second chapter to show people that like, we're going to execute for you. Like, this isn't just like, I'm happy I'm sitting on all this money. No, it's going to like, okay, well, now we're going to reinvest this. Now we're going to execute on the film. And then we're going to build out this whole, all these infrastructures to reward you. Because if it wasn't for them, Aku's not, Aku's just Aku, like in my head. Wow. That, I feel like that is very rare in today's <laughs> day and age, because most people look at NFTs as, you know, I don't want to say most, but there are people out there who look at NFTs as a way to quote unquote secure the bag, you know, through like a joke or a gimmick or turning something that they have physically into something digital just for money. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, 
is pretty, you look at it as though it's a business in its own, right? Like why? It's a full on business. It's a full on business. It's, it's what I do. I wake up every, every morning, seven days a week. I took my first off day. I took my first off day um, last Saturday. I took my daughter to the beach and we have fun. But my first off day since we dropped chapter one. Um, because this is the thing about NFTs. Sure, there was a week where you could, you, if you had a famous name, you could drop something and you were going to make money. Now, no, like you got to, it's a business. It's, it's, just, it's a different, just like you have an agent, just like you, you know, are posted on this. You need to have like a whole strategy around NFTs, you know, or otherwise you don't get lapped out the building. And thank goodness it's more reputation based now because I was so yeah. worried and, you know, rightfully so at the beginning of all this coming from like a collectibles background, 99% of stuff ends up being worth nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. So then you add in like an unknown world and celebrities pushing things to an audience that doesn't have background in collectibles. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> this is a disaster. Um, and now, fortunately, it's more reputation based where as people you know, want to, they want to learn about things similar to how people want to, you know, look at all the analytics behind companies before they put money into their stocks, right? I mean, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about it? Like, obviously you're collecting, but like, what was your, what's your thought then versus now when it comes to NFTs? Is that like a, is that a market that you're like, you know, or you, you want to, you're kind of waiting to see if it proves itself out? No, uh, very early, I knew that a, it was going to be huge for people who, who had big followings, um, but it was going to, A, my first thought, I'll, I'll go the full, uh, the full discography of my own thoughts here. First, I thought that the big celebrities were going to make money, but hurt their reputation so much that they would lose money in the long run, which I think mm -hmm. has happened um they because loyalty and trust are you know the the most important things in the world and they're crushing that with on a mil multi-million person basis so i thought that even if you got let's say five million dollars and you have five ten million followers that was a very bad move um you know because you're hurting that trust and that's something that you know, like anything, like in a relationship or anything, you know, it takes years to build and five seconds to crush, you know, so that that was my first thought. But then after that, looking at it from a collectibles perspective, um, so like sports cards, for example, the top, the top five to 10% of the market uh, holds up much better uh, than the bottom 90% in terms of value. Like when, when everything hits the fan, um, uh, and so I collect presidential signatures, uh, as context, like Abraham Lincoln and uh, George Washington and things like that. And one of the reasons why I liked it so much was because when you know, the financial crisis hit in 2008, 2009, it didn't go down in value because they were so sought after they've been collected for uh, yeah. Washington the signature I have is from before the United States uh, before the Declaration of Independence from like 1760. So th these things have been kept and collected for hundreds of years. No market is going to affect that. And the same thing is true in sports cards to an extent where the LeBron and Jordan rookies hold up much better when everything hits the fan as opposed to a lot of the other stuff. So my immediate thought is, all right, let me try to figure out what those things are in this space and then put time and energy into learning those things and spending time with those people I'm not, I was never, and I still am not putting huge personal money into any NFT project. I'm putting more time and I like making content about it because content is a great way to be involved uh, yep. for free uh, and from an education standpoint so that other people are then informed. Um, but, you know, I, I still think they're, you know, I, I've heard, you know, Gary and a bunch of people say this before, but 99 point something percent of these projects will be worthless in five years um so for anybody who isn't doing tons of research tons of due diligence you're it's worse than gambling i think um you know so you really but the good stuff all time what, like, what i think what i think is going to happen i think you need all this other stuff to transpire 
because it will I think what will happen is like you'll see a, a bear market, right? Like a lot of stuff comes out, it just it's dropping in prices, people get upset, it goes dormant. But in that time, you got people still utilizing the technology and still building and still building and still building, right? And so then I think this is this is my thesis is there'll come a time when NFTs will be blurred with mainstream, where like you won't know you're using NFT. You won't know something is backed by NFT. You know, it would just be common knowledge or just readily available or used. And I think that's going to happen after like you see like a, you know, people start talk stop talking about it as much, right? When it's not like these flashy headlines like money, 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 totally. money, money. Oh. Right. Those are like the projects that that's more of what I was talking about. The tech is a no brainer. Like the example that I always love to use is every ticket to everything forever will be an NFT yes. forever. It's a no brainer. There's no reason that Drake shouldn't get commission when the reseller sells his front row seat okay. after he drops it for 10 X. And there's no reason that the venue wouldn't support that. And there's no reason that even the reseller would care, right? You want the artist to benefit and then they would, in turn, support people reselling their tickets and they would encourage it and probably give you more platforms. It's a scalper's dream and it's an artist's dream. It's the most symbiotic thing in the world. And from a utility yep. standpoint, it's a no brainer. And I think all those things will be true for physical collectibles too. They'll be tied to digital um, and mm. inseparable uh, to uh, verify and authenticate stuff that's tied to the grading companies. All that stuff is a no brainer, but for like the individual projects, you got to know, you got to know, like you got to really believe like people believe in you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I execute. That's it. I execute like that's that. That's all it is. I'm active. So I'm in discord every day. There was a time when I was in the middle of like working with this all hit. And I was like, dude, I need to work. Like, I was like playing catch up. I feel like playing catch up. Here's Aku. It did his thing. And now I'm playing catch up. So I was like off, I was like off the grid working for like a month and discord kind of quiet. And you see how the prices start going like this, right? I'm in discord every day, multiple times a day. I'm answering like questions. I'm helping people get like verified on and, and, and things like that. I'm in meetings, like I got back from LA and I was in meetings from literally like 5 AM till like 1 AM. And whenever I get a ping and it's like this private group chat with all the collectors, I'm like, okay, we got to, you know, but that, because I needed, I need them to see that, like, yo, like, this is not a game. Like, this isn't like uh, just a fun thing I'm doing. Like, I'm out here grinding, but I'm also in here making sure that, you know, I'm communicating directly because the information that you can get from collectors, like now, early on, can shape the whole company, can shape the whole direction. So, like, that information to me is invaluable. That relationship is invaluable. Like, and to your point, you're building the trust, and then you go execute on things. And then you come back and, and do that, then you're going to build the trust. And what I'm building is legitimately trying to build a network large enough that when the Aku movie comes out, we could theoretically distribute it right to collectors. To your point, if, if Drake sells a ticket, he gets a percentage, right? And it's great for the reseller, et cetera, et cetera. Same, same is true for film. Like we go to we go on Voodoo and buy a movie for nineteen ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine, whatever it is. We just are passive consumers. What, what NFTs are allowing you to do is resell it. What if what if I gave you this the movie for free, and you could go resell? There's only you know a million different a million op, op, copies of the movie. You go get, someone else wants to rent it. Someone else wants to rent it. Someone else wants to rent it. you put the, you make the you allow the audience to be yeah the yeah you allow the audience to be the distribution. So that is what we're building, brick by brick by brick, the network in order to do that. That would be super cool. I'm excited to see. Like, do you, do you think we're anywhere close to these big Fortune 500 companies utilizing it? Like, like what would be the most obvious way for like, I mean, for Netflix, that's the, that's the answer right there. But for somebody like Apple or Amazon, how, how do we think they can uh utilize it because i feel like once that happens then the widespread ad adoption and n and necessity for knowledge and education will just increase 20 fold my here's my thought and i think it's playing out so far it doesn't matter how big your brand is or how big your company is unless you're coming in crypto natively like crypto native projects have a head start like so if netflix comes out like 
let's say Marvel. I think Marvel did something recently, right? Uh, NFT recently. I'm not sure how it did, but like I'm willing to bet that Board Apes is will, will do better, right? Because 100%. of the crypto nature of it. Um, you look at so. I think that mass adoption will come from crypto native project versus Netflix saying, oh, this are we we're, we're selling NFTs, or, you know, to our show. Everybody's going to be like, well, kind of goes against the ethos of crypto, right? Um, so I actually think that it will be the, it's not going to come from a Fortune 500 mass adoption. Like Instagram followers, Instagram people are not buying NFTs right now. It's Twitter, right? Like Totally. Yeah, you know, Twitter, um, Twitter, and then and then Discord, like you said. Yeah, when you get whoever can get Instagram followers converted to NFT buyers wins, and it's gonna have to be a crypto native project. So, how do you feel about the mass market of NFTs? Like, what is your when you look at all of the different projects? Like, what are what are you looking at, or what are you trying to identify quickly to figure out what's good and and you know maybe what isn't. Well, anything with anybody that's putting in effort is good, in my opinion, because they're giving it a shot. You know, it has to be effort. You see people engaging, you see people communicating, you know, effort is, is, is all I, you know, I'm not one to judge what their, their intentions are or, you know, what they're doing. I think I love seeing, you know, what Board Apes does with commercial rights. I love, you know, different projects that are pushing the limits on, on that. Um, because, uh, you know, someone was telling me, like, when Walt Disney started the Mickey Mouse Club back in, like, what was it, like, 29, or he had all these Mickey Mouse Clubs popping up everywhere. He shut it down because he didn't have control over the IP anymore. So he shut it down. He's like, I want to control all this. And it's funny now, 100 years later, they're giving it out. Like, you go, you know? And so I think I, I really admire those projects. I don't think we're at that stage with Aku to do that because we kind of went more of the – Let's go to the film route, right? Let's go here first and then figure out how to redistribute that back into the community. Um, I think, I don't think there's one right answer to do it. I think Board Apes could have, I think Board Apes is a widely successful example of that. Um, so that's really, I really like that kind of stuff. Um, I like seeing things that are different than, you know, not an emphasis on the art. Start seeing people play with the technology more. Like just because it's not, you know, an image just represents the token underneath. The token is what the valuable part, right? Right. I, I do love those those ideas that are pushing the boundaries in terms of IP and in terms of allowing people to buy into something on a different level than, you know, like a VC investment, right? When you invest in a, you know, series A, you get a little bit of allocation and you give them a bunch of money and that's that. You know, there's no there's no action. There's no, part there's no yeah. participation, right? Maybe you get to vote on something here and there text the founder your advice your thoughts but that doesn't right. Matter, right? right but with this you know if you have a if you're getting a little bit of ip like i've always wondered and i can't wait and i've thought about even you know one day maybe even doing it with you know this podcast or specific episodes allowing people to own parts of them and be able to benefit off of whatever ads are on the show in perpetuity and then they get like dividends off those ads depending on how each individual podcast does and they could get in before it drops a thousand percent dude that's where you know that's where the limit's gonna have to be pushed because what why is the rule in place that you have to be an accredited investor to invest in something right like so you got to have a net worth over 100 grand or 100 grand in the bank or whatever it is to invest that 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 house like the majority of the united states of america like yeah and so the rich get richer and then everybody else is just stuck in their lane because now they got to grind to get that you know and like they can't invest in a deal they like because they don't have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank and the worst part is but they're allowed to play the lottery that's that's it's the damn. most that's the most messed up part about it all it's like the, if, if signals everywhere one, if, everywhere exactly if you think one like if you can't invest in a company you shouldn't be allowed to gamble or play the lottery etc yet you know, like that, that's the most messed up part about it, in my opinion. And they, and they hide behind the facade of like, we want to protect retail investors, protect us. Like you, I can walk into the casino at 18 years old 
Like I've done it. I walked into a casino and with my baseball money, had no idea about anything from financial literacy whatsoever and got my ass whooped. I'm like sitting there like, dang, I wish I would have known that taxes are due here coming up and I'm going to have to pay X amount in taxes. Like, you know, it'd be nice to know that, you know, it's, it's, it's silly to me. And I think that the projects that are pushing that right now are really cool to me. They're going for it. And we're hundred percent going for it too. Like we're hundred percent going for it where we can allow participation. The way I say it is I want people from where I grew up from my neighborhood to be able to participate in the upside of Aku, like full stop. Like that's it. However we get that done, that's the, that's, that's the success in my opinion, because now they have an exposure to, um, you know, imagine having exposure to like, I'm not saying this is the equivalent of Haku, but Mickey Mouse back in the day, right? You're in early. Right. You change your trajectory for your entire uh, legacy, your entire family tree is changed because you believed in the creator, you believed in a, in a also, character, you believed in an idea. Mickey Mouse is much more fun than Disney. Exactly. And I exactly. think that's, that's part of the part of the reason why NFTs are so great. And alternative investments in general is it's more fun. Like most people who are investing aren't passionate about the things they're investing in. Like nobody's passionate about a bond. <laughs> you know, it's like, what are we doing no. here? You know, people should be excited about everything in their life. And I think that NFTs and alternative investments make that more true than, you know, traditionally has ever been. It's it, man. Like it, it's very easy for me to go to walk, walk down the street, talk to a six year old and be like, hey, this is my character. This is what he stands for. This is like what we're doing. This is what he does. You know, he travels around. He has his cool helmet. Like, okay, cool. I was like, you can like, you can invest in it if you wanted to. You can buy an NFT and, you know, it could go up in value. Okay, cool. Very easy to understand, right? That thing could become another movie, this movie and that movie, spin off here, spin off there. And now you have a, a, a franchise. And, you know, it's very, it's a palatable thing to invest in. It's not like I'm saying, hey, we're doing something very confusing. Do you want to put in, you know, your money? It's, it's, it's family entertainment and media. Yeah, I think generally it's just like like with anything, like you can't judge something unless you fully understand it. Um, I think if everybody sort of aligned with that, there wouldn't be any judgment because you know to judge anybody's work requires having gone through the same thing, which would give you a different perspective than you have. So you can't really judge people for anything. But uh, and and it's also true that nobody who is doing more than you will ever uh, speak negatively to you. Um, right, that's right. true across the board. So the only people who would speak negatively are people who haven't done their due diligence and are not doing as much, right? So does that, that naturally, I, I think helps a lot of people when, you know, especially in, in NFTs now, and you know, I've, I used to see it in sports card, dude, I can't even tell you how many times people called me like a nerd and all this stuff in school because I collected cards. Um, and it just happens over and over and over again, where just this lack of understanding and due diligence allows people to say, you know, the NFT equivalent of that is like, oh, let me just take a screenshot of that. And I have it. And it's like, you know, you, you can say that 20 times or, you know, we can have a conversation and educate on the fact that, you know, it's not a JPEG. It's the ability uh, or it's not a you know a MP3 or video file MP4. It's a you know it, you're paying for the ability to do something with this, and you're paying for the ability to resell it, and it's legit. That's what you're paying for. You're not paying for it. You can look at it, and it's great, and everybody should look at all of the NFT artworks because you know it's the same thing as walking into the Louvre and looking at. I think that's where the Mona Lisa is. You know, walking in there and. Uh, looking to Mona Lisa, me, I took a photo. Now I own it. Good luck selling that photo for five hundred or for billions of dollars. You know what's interesting too is like, if you take any of their phones and throw it down the down the drain, right, or or don't you know, chuck it off the roof, the most valuable thing they have are on that phone, like your your photos, your contacts, you know, all that's on your phone. So how are you going to say like a, a digital asset is not valuable because it's not, you know, real. Nobody's like taking disposable photos anymore. So like everything is moving digital. So how, why, what is confusing about this? Like, that's because a great, it's a digital that's asset. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Like Instagram, you know, like you lose your Instagram, it's over. Like, you know, 
that's the most valuable thing to you. You can't print it out. I mean, you can, but it's not like there's no value in it when you're printed out and hanging on your wall. The value is in people seeing your Instagram, seeing your followers, seeing your likes. What are you talking about? It's very simple. That you, 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 put, you, it, you put it you put it much better than than I've ever heard anybody put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's just uh you know, my phone's dead right now. And I'm like, yeah, dang, like all my information's on there. Like who's texting me, you know? Same thing. I swear, yeah. stuff you you really realize how powerless you are when you lose Wi-Fi. <laughs> You're just like, yo. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. start turning around. You're like, I yeah, need to yeah. find food. <laughs> <laughs> my phone's dead. I'm like, hey man, I gotta plug this in. <laughs> no. Um, so it, that's super true. Um, what are some other uses of NFTs that you've seen that you're really impressed by or you know you think are going to be the future or used by a lot of people? Are there any other projects that you've seen? Like, are, are you a fan of CryptoPunks and you know what, what Larva Labs are doing or, or Top Shot and, and all, all these different projects? Like, what do you, what's your yeah. internal state of the union on, on everything else going on? Yeah, I love, yeah, I love them all. I love CryptoPunks, I love Top Shot. Um, People need to understand Top Shot is uh, massive, you know, you know, it's uh, they didn't just they're building, you know, um, Top Shot. Well, from a perspective of, you know, celebrity, right, and, and major brands, I think the future is going to be access to them. Like, how can I have access to you? Like, that's what people want. Like, people want access and how you figure that out, how you shape that. Um, is going to be interesting. There's different ways to do it, but I think that's where I'll see, you start seeing a shift is access to something, access to a movie, access to a meet and greet. Um, like, let's take like a, a middle level athlete, for example, who isn't like a LeBron, but is, you know, isn't a me. You got like someone that's like middle level, right? You've got a good following. They could do really well if they were engaging, right? Like post game in there talking to like their discord group, you know, man, we broke down this play, like blah, blah, blah. You know, hey, let's go out to dinner here. We're having a meet up in this city. They could drive a lot of value to their personal brand in the small window we have as athletes to monetize our personal brand using NFTs and, and providing access to them. Like a ton of value. I couldn't agree more. I've said this to a few um, baseball players that I'm friends with before too. I was like, responding to a kid's comment on Instagram is the digital equivalent of throwing him a baseball in the stands, but it's actually Sorry. better because it stays there forever and he can show his Great friends point. and his proof. And I'm shocked that every athlete doesn't either do it themselves or have a full-time person who just engages with their audience because put money and monetization aside, talking about making days out here you know yeah. like it's super real and it's not there's a lot being left on the table both there and then obviously you know monetarily speaking through projects and nfts and access and moments and things like that and in the time yeah. we're in you know like i mean obviously now like some athletes are getting paid half in crypto which is cool to see i'm, I'm interested to see how that all plays out obviously but um, like I know Messi is getting part of his new contract in. I actually love that. I love that a lot more than I love seeing like, I don't know what Trevor Lawrence got paid in ETH. Um, he could just buy ETH, you know, like it's like, you, you know, you can liquidate that. I love what Messi did because he can directly drive value to that network. Because it's right? a PSG token, right? Exactly. So exactly. fascinating. So he can drive value to that. Like those tokens and the Aku tokens coming next month. Those tokens. Ooh, there's provide, an Aku token coming? Yes. Very critical. It's the, probably the most critical layer of the entire ecosystem because what the token does and it signs the value to the network. Like, like how you, you know, you have followers and you have likes, but that's not the true value because then you have engagement, you have, you know, this. What the token now does, like let's take PSG, for example, and Messi's engaging, the token's going up. That's showing true value of the network, right? Like Messi can say, you know, 
I did, I drove this much value and here's a tangible number, right? In the context of Aku, we can do everything we do is focused on the community, how to build value, how to drive value back to the token. And so you, now you have a tangible metric to show the value that you're driving, but then the, the, the people inside of the network, right? Like going to go talk about it, building it up, doing this initiative, doing that is about the network. I love that, man. I love, a man, genius idea by Messi. Yeah, it's super fascinating. I saw when he first, when the announcement came out, it went like three, three it grew by 300%, something insane. I just need to learn more about the legalities of like promoting stuff like that um, because I don't think he can say anything about it if I'm not mistaken. I just need to learn. I, I, I'm curious to learn more about, you know, what he can do, say, et cetera, what kind of trouble he would get in if he did say something. Do you know anything about that? No, I mean, like, how we look at the Aku token is like, that's your that's your subscription. Like, it's no different than getting a Disney Plus. Like, it, let's say we release an animated series to, to the token holders. Mm. Like, that's what it is, right? It's just a metric to prove the the value of the, the network. Like how much, instead of having a static, you know, it's 9.99 to enter, what if the community just is doing all these activations all over the world and like right. the show is incredible, right? The network value is gonna go up. Like, sort of like a Facebook group or a newsletter. Exactly right. Like if we produce a bad show or we're not driving value to the network or the community doesn't feel like we're engaging with them, it's going to be reflective in, in the, the measure of the, of the token, the metric of the token. Right. So okay. that's like, that's, yeah, it's like that. yeah, 100%, 100%. It's, it's critical to what we're doing. Like one of the most important pieces of it, because we have a true measuring stick. So when we have the video game over here, we have education over here, we have product over here, we have books, everybody is aligned, with, aligned on the one thing, driving value back to the token holders. It's very, very, very easy to understand. Like very easy to understand. So everybody's just boom, boom. We got all these commander intents just cooking. And it's so much more fun than, and yeah, you know, I, I don't mean to bash like traditional stocks. I think they're great too, especially for companies that you know you believe in and, and whatnot. But um, it's so much more fun. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be a blast. Like these next couple months and years, it's going to be. Uh, it's a grind. It's a grind to get that network large enough. The only way you do that is drive value. What do you mean by network? Do you mean individual people or do you mean tech plus people? What, 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 is, what does network mean to you? People. people. Absolutely the people. The, the tech is the things that we can, the tech is the infrastructure we need to drive value. Video games is one, right? Big into that. Um, but the, the network is the people, like that's it, the audience, because that's the distribution. Like that's the people that are talking about Aku. Like you want them to go out there and talk good about Aku, everything we're doing. So network is people. I love that, man. So what, what are you most, what excites you the most right now is my last question for you, but what, what gets you the most excited, you know, when you wake up, you start thinking about it? What, what about this project or what in general gets you the most, uh, most amped up? Probably it's everything, man. It's seeing the people talk about Aku. It's knowing that we have a really important message behind Aku that I can't get out by myself. So I need the help of the network to get it out there. And the only way I can do that is by working my ass off and doing everything in house. This, it wouldn't be possible. Like if you think about this, if I made this movie or we, this movie deal gets done and I don't retain rights over the IP and which I could easily, which people I don't know understand, I could easily just have license the movie and that have been that they have the rights of the ip but because of the success of the nft in the community i was able to retain 100 percent ownership of it and so 
by doing so, I'm now able to build the infrastructure necessary to drive value to the audience and the collectors. If Disney had, I wouldn't have, I'd be out, my hands are tied, right? Like, thank you guys. You made it, you guys allowed me to make a great movie and uh, thanks. But that, you know, that's what gets me excited. That's the, that's the challenge is building it large enough to distribute so we can retain 100% ownership as long as possible. Man, I love that. Well, you know, you know, I'm going to be supporting. Um, no doubt. Where where can people find out more? Where can they follow you? Where can they look into this? Where where do where do people go? Aku Dreams on Instagram, Twitter. Um, Micah Johnson three on Instagram, Twitter. Um, we're there, you know. Discord too, you know. Hop in Discord. It's pretty cool in there. People are very very great people in there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for doing this. This was awesome. We covered so much ground. Super dope. Awesome. Super dope, though. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. See you.